Hey everyone, the numbers are in for Calypso in Panama City Beach for April of 2022. And are we seeing a shift in the market finally? I'm Craig Duran with the Duran Group at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. And I wanna go into the numbers very specifically to show you some things that um, really keep an eye on. Uh, before we get into the numbers, if you know of anybody that would benefit from the ideas in this, we're, I'm getting a lot of feedback that people are really like the videos or like the information in that. So if there's anybody you know that may want the Calypso video specifically, please share this with them. Or um, we have our, our general overviews of the, the condo market and the housing market also. So um, let them know that it's out there, whether it's, you know, sharing on a Facebook page or sharing an email, what have you. Um, let's get right to it. There's some interesting things I think we need to be paying attention to in the condo market. The chart you're looking at here, and I won't dig deep into the spreadsheet, but the first column it says active. That means the number of units for sale, the number of condos for sale. We've been tracking this week by week by week by week since the beginning of the coronavirus. Um, I started at the beginning of the pandemic just to sort of try to get some sense of what may be happening in the market. And it seemed it, it was uh, we're tracking some numbers that our local MLS doesn't easily provide for us. So we just kept tracking them since then. Uh, active is the number of units for sale. So supply. And this third column is the number of new contracts being written. So the demand. So let's just think about without digging into the numbers, let's just think about supply and demand. If a market, um, explain this to you really fast. If a market is going to shift in real estate, we want to start to pick up some subtle trends. Um, numbers wouldn't go from zero to a hundred or 90 to six dramatically overnight. They would, it would be a slower moving thing. We would, we would look at slower moving trends and, and these things are incremental. Um, the real estate market can most often move slower than you might see in some dramatic days in the stock market. Um, so let's look at some numbers and get some sense of what's happening. I've got Jan the month of January is highlighted, 2022. If you look at the first column of active for sale condos in the entire market, we're down 50, 54, 56, 59% year over year. Buyers had 50% fewer choices to make, so they felt a little bit of a pinch. There was not much to buy. The number of new contracts being written was up still, more demand, less supply than last year, more demand. 36% more, 9% more, 16% more. In February, pay close attention, uh, it, still we were still down about the real similar numbers, 56, 50, 49, 52, less supply. But the number of new contracts now, look at that, it's a pretty dramatic shift from January to February, all red. We wrote 17% fewer contracts, 10%, 17, 24% less, less demand. March, look at this. Still year over year, less supply, but it's 40, 34, 27, 11%. Instead of 50% less, those numbers are creeping up. There's some supply getting added to the market. And look at the number of new contracts being written. In February, we were only down 17, 10, 17, 24. And in, in March, we were down 47, 51, 49, 31%. Less demand, even more supply. Look at the month of April. First time year over year in those four months, we actually had more supply year over year than we did. So there's even more supply continuing to be added and there's fewer contracts being written again, 25%, 25, 34% down year over year. Um, in short, more supply, less demand. We look at this, um, I won't dwell on the months of inventory chart for you, but remember months of inventory, four to five months of inventory is a neutral-ish market in real estate. Look at where we've been as recent as December, January. In the condo market, we were at 0.78 months of inventory. January, we were at 0.54 months of inventory, meaning theoretically the entire condo market would sell out in a half a month. That's how hot the market was. Units would hit the market, multiple offers, same day under contract. Um, we're still, and, and look at this from a percentage standpoint or thinking about analyzing a trend. February, 1.27 months of inventory. March, 1.19, about the same. April's jumped to 2.27. If you think about it, from January to February, 0.54 to, point, or to 1.27, that's more than twice as slow. If you just look at raw numbers, if you look at it from January to April, we're almost five times as slow 
as we were in January. Now, January is extremely almost as hot as you could get. So 2.27 is still very much a seller's market, but um, it's, it's, it's worth paying attention to. Um, there's a trend, there's a shift happening there. Um, for Calypso specifically, I think it gets pretty interesting here. Um, Calypso is probably the only project on the beach that's had some different factors affecting it because of the new tower. Look at where we've been there. Um, January 0.58, about the same number. We slowed in February, just like the overall market to 1.3, March to 1.6. Look at the jump to April. We're very much have already jumped into neutral market territory in Calypso, at least for a month. Remember, I mean, next month that could shift down a little bit, could shift up a little bit. But look at all these trends of more supply, less demand, more supply, less demand. That's a pretty big jump. And we haven't seen a five number in Calypso in quite some time. It's been since early February, January, February, early 2021, since we've seen numbers like that. And a lot of that had to do with units for sale in Tower 3. Um, that's a pretty big move and, and worth paying attention to. To look specifically at some of the... Um, uh, pricing, I, I went back to March and April. I hadn't gone deep into the numbers for you. So these are sales from March and April in Calypso. Tower two had a closing uh, 440,000 in a one bedroom. Uh, tower, uh, I'm sorry, tower three uh, had a one bedroom closing at 440. Tower two had a one bedroom closing at 445. Uh, tower three had a one bedroom closing at 477. I'm going uh, up in price. Um, Tower one had a one bedroom closing at 478. Tower one had a closing, a jump to 525. We worked on that one. Uh, Tower one had a closing at 532. We worked on that one also. Tower three had a closing at 537, 400, uh, and a one bedroom. We worked on that one also. Um, Tower two had a three bedroom close at 650,000. Um, tower two had a two bedroom, two bath and bunk close at 675. Uh, tower two, or, I'm sorry, tower one had the two bedroom end unit close at 760. Uh, tower three had one of the two bedroom, two bath converted units, the three bedroom over there, 795. Tower three, 1801, um, had, um, Three bedroom, three bath, closed at 949. And then we also worked on Tower 2, 1409, that closed at 1.3 million on the Gulf side. Uh, we also, I won't go into pending contracts too much at the moment, but I'm personally working on a one bedroom in Tower 3, um, another one in an end unit on the west side in Tower 2 that um, is a $1.3 million contract and, and a three bedroom end unit in Tower um one uh, that will be closing over a million shortly, but we'll update you on that once everything closes. So quick, very quickly, the takeaways to pay attention to and a couple strategy things to think about. Um, we're drifting. It looks like over the last few months in the overall market, we're adding some supply. We have a little less demand. If that continues, if that trend stays the same, at some point, if you drift into neutral market across the entire beach, it looks like we may be there at least this month in Calypso, depends on how much of that will close. Um, the longer you're in neutral market territory, or if you keep adding supply, keep having less demand, you drift into buyer market territory, that's where you see pressure on pricing to come down. Um, you might, the longer we land in neutral market territory, the more you would think pricing would sort of uh, uh, flatten out a little bit. One thing also to think about and pay attention to, look at what happened with supply from April to August of last year. Here's April. The red line is the number of units that represents the supply or the number of units for sale. May, June, July, August, it was a pretty dramatic spike. The reason for that, it's not terribly surprising. If you think about April through what's happening in the market in those months, units are very heavily rented. It's hard for us as real estate professionals to show anybody anything that they want to buy. Um, because everything's so rented. And as buyers have more choices, they'll feel a little less motivated to have to write these sight unseen contracts. They will want to see things. And 
even if they want to purchase in the summer, what ends up happening in so many cases is that it just gets pushed off until um, after the season. So if we're already trending up and adding some supply to the market, uh, and demand is waning a little bit, and then naturally in the season, we pull some demand out of that. You could see the supply continue to move up. Um, we do usually have a, a, a fair amount of buyers that, that did, did want to buy that come back into the market in August, September, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens with the market with these trends between now and then. A couple of takeaways if you're thinking about selling in 2022. Um, you, it looks like month over month, you will have more competition. At least that's what's happened. That's the trend at the moment. You wouldn't be surprised to see that trend continue in the summer. So if you're thinking about selling, you might start the process sooner rather than later to avoid having more competitors. Um, if you don't want to wait, if you want to wait until the end of rental season, um, instead of calling right at the end of rental season, Labor Day time or something like that. Start your process earlier than you might think. End of June, early July, start the process. It'll take us a good week or two to get marketing going, especially if something's heavily rented. We've got to pick a day where we can get a photographer, a videographer in the unit. And then whatever day that is, we are gonna we need to make sure it's a nice weather. So um, plan a little bit. Uh, start the process earlier, you'll have less competition. Um, it already looks like you have more competition than you would have if you'd done it 60 or 90 days ago. But uh, if the trend continues, you may think about starting that process sooner rather than later. Um, I know that's a lot, but that's the Calypso specific update. Almost 12 minutes of that for you for April. Uh, we'll be back in touch next month. If you have any questions, my cell number, personal cell number, feel free to call or text message 850-527-0221. And again, um, if you like receiving this information as we're seeing some changes in the market, you know, either subscribe inside of the YouTube channel um, or just let me know and I can set you up on our e-alert system. I like to get out information. I don't want to pound people with it, but I like once a month to give a video update. And then once a week, I just have an email that goes out on Friday with some general information. Um, that's the extent of me um, pushing real estate on you, uh, just trying to keep people informed. So hopefully you found it helpful. Uh, we'll be back in touch next month. Thanks for watching.